arrow functions could also have parameters. Let's add here new parameter a, and now instead of printing string a, let's print value of the parameter a. It is actually a variable inside of this arrow function. And let's call this function with value 10 on this line and with value string abc on this line. And now I see 10 and abc. Because now arrow function prints to the console a. Great. But what arrow function returns? Let's instead of console log here, simply type a like that, immediately after arrow function syntax. And now let's print to the console result of this function call. Console log fn 10. And here let's remove this line for now. Let's save changes and now I get 10. This means that now this function actually returns value of the variable a. And this is called implicit return. We don't see now return statement here in this function declaration. But if you don't put pair of curly braces as indication of the function body, then arrow function will implicitly return value of this expression. Because a here is expression, and that's why here on this line we see 10. If I repeat same function call with another argument, for example a, I'll get a. Because again, this value is returned implicitly on this line. And such syntax in arrow functions allows you to use just single expressions and immediately return result of them. And you could write arrow function just on single line, like I did here. But if you want to put multiple statements in the arrow function, then of course you are able to use function body. Simply add here a pair of curly braces like that, it will be function body. And now you could perform any actions here, same as we did in regular function. For instance, you could return a. And now we explicitly return a, because there is return statement. If I save changes now, I see exactly the same result. But now I could perform other actions inside of this function body. For instance, I could print to the console text, hey, there, like that. And now this function anytime when it is called will print to the console, hey, there. And also it will return value of the a. Next, what you could do with arrow functions, you could omit parentheses in case there is only one parameter. And this function is perfect example for that. I could simply remove those parentheses from here, save changes and I get same result. If there are multiple parameters in the arrow function, you are not able to omit parentheses here. For instance, if there are two parameters a and b, you need to keep those parentheses here. Let's now save changes and I get same result, because here inside of this function I don't use value of the variable b. But let me print it uh, instead of this string like that, save changes and now I see undefined in both function calls, because here and here I pass only single argument for parameter a, but I don't pass second argument. If I do that here for example on this line, for example 2, I'll get 2 on this line, but still undefined on this line. So, behavior of arrow functions is very similar to behavior of the regular functions, but you could optimize syntax of any arrow function. You could omit those curly braces if there is only one expression inside of the arrow function, and also if there is only one parameter, you could omit those parentheses. And also always please keep in mind that arrow functions are anonymous, they don't have name. Here is actual arrow function. And we, in this example, assign this function as a value to the variable fn. And that's why we could call such arrow function using name of the variable this function is assigned to.